expert that's joining us on the table. It's time for us to further dissect the developments. To help us do that, we have a Professor Huang Myungjin of Korea University joining us in the studio. Dr. Huang, thank you so much for making time for us. Thanks for coming, for inviting me. Right. right. First, first of all, I think the Kim Trump summit mm -hmm. sort of stole the thunder a little bit from the election. For sure. Well, uh, I think the, the, it's obvious that the benefits that goes to the support of the Democratic Party, as you know, the vote uh, turned out to be, you know, uh, it's kind of a massive massacre for the opposite parties and supporters because you know they have no, well the. The vote results might be pretty much expected, but the, the margin is quite surprisingly higher than uh, ex uh, the expert, uh, most experts uh, expected. So that's kind of you know big thing, and the Trump effect is uh, um, we are not quite sure about it. You know, maybe in the further analysis might have to be an uh, investigation, but uh, for sure this at least that doesn't really undermine the you know vic victory of the you know Democratic Party. Okay, so was it a source of distraction or a reinforcement, these big events happening while exactly a day before the actual election date? Uh, from now on, I believe it's quite big support and reinforcement rather than, you know, uh, yeah, distractions. For the ruling Democratic Party? Yes, uh, for the Hong Jin person and other the opposite party, that's quite big uh, distraction because, you know, they could not raise any issues other than, you know, the scandal and, the, you know, disclosure and uh, some negative uh, campaign. And they weren't very supportive of the movement to open up for dialogue with North Korea. And uh, during the inter-Korean summit as well, uh, it turns out that uh, the Liberty Korea Party wasn't exactly responding to it in a positive way as many in Korea did. I guess it's major failure of the opposite party. Not only that they uh, effectively uh, providing campaign against it, they failed to get into that th as a partner of the whole dialogues and you know the force massive forces that you know people might be more interested in the you know nuclear uh, issues and North Korean and uh, U.S. summit. So, right, uh, it's, if you can't beat them, you got to join them at certain times strategically. Exactly. But they failed to see that logic. Uh, going back to the inter-Korean summit, what impact did it have in the long haul from? Uh, April 27th, when that event was held, when they shook hands, how did it affect voters, in your opinion? Uh, voters, I think they can be uh, stick with the, the, you know, the issues, and then uh, democratic parties uh, have uh, continuously uh, provide, you know, progressive and uh, uh, more you know, labor-friendly uh, policies, and then. Uh, many, uh, especially economic uh, areas, experts uh, have, you know, raises many uh, questions and uh, issues. But you know, that doesn't really affect you know many voters, especially uh, uh, young and uh, the progressive uh, support people. So uh, th many things might affect, but you know, you know, the, the North Korea and the, the, the U.S. summit has some you know bonding effect of the old things all together to support or help the, or benefit for the uh, Democratic Party. Right, just a couple of years ago, uh, the nation came together, a lot of the people in the country came together mm -hmm. to speak up against a flawed government, mm -hmm. uh, to impeach President Makane. It was the first ever impeachment in mm -hmm. Korean history of a democratically elected leader. Mm -hmm. Is there still a spillover, a continuation of the candlelight vigil spirit in terms of voters' uh, a sentiment towards who they want to pick? I think so. This is uh, the moment that we uh, acknowledge that uh, our continuous uh, uh, reforms and uh, changes progressively into the uh, future is, uh, has not been changed. Uh, one of the small evidences of those who are very close to Park Geun-hye's uh, inner circle, you know, power elite group, for instance, Yoo Jong-bok, so, so byung and Kim Tae-ho, they, they've lost quite, you know, with big margin. That's the one uh, evidence that people still remember that those who are uh, working with the Park Geun-hye administration might be out of our political, you know, league. Right, they might be out of touch with the political league and the voters as well. Uh, what about uh, some people seeing this not just as an election to rate President Moon Jae-in and his government's performance, but rather sending a clear message to the previous, uh, the party that used to be uh, where Park Geun-hye used to belong to? 
Oh, I think the people still want that, uh, you know, more uh, regretful and um, uh, what you must say, the apologies. Uh, well, those actions might have been shown from the, you know, currently the opposite party, but still people are not really satisfied with this paper. So I think the, this might be the sad news for, for the opposite party, but they have to think about why they have this kind of result. It's not about, you know, the Moon Jae-in and the current uh, ruling Democratic Party did anything right or wrong, but it's about that they haven't changed it at all. So it might be from a moment that they have to think about. And the one, one, one uh, biggest uh, mistake is, you know, ancient regimes, all the power, elite people are still running for the, you know, the, the local the, the election. That's really give distress satisfactions for the you know voters this is what happened i think help us show the balance between these two factors the uh, the liberals the liberal side's hard work its uh, su successful performance or is it the conservatives failure to move on or change which is the bigger factor here i think the i agree with the first part because uh moon Jae-in administration just took the administration just for one year it's too soon to make any evaluation or judgment. We have to look into what's going to happen in the future and continuous uh, progressive uh, policy been taken, you know, and uh, it's, uh, for instance, uh, labor market uh, reform and, uh, you know, some uh, jobless ownership uh, might have to change it. And uh, social justice and uh, maybe uh, equal development of regions and uh, gender equality, it has to be uh, move, moving on towards that's what many people uh, think and they vote for the Democratic Party candidate. There have been so many things going on uh, during the election or leading up to the election, uh, the Drew King scandal, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, the critical, the criticism from Hong Jinpyo regarding the, the way the survey is conducted mm -hmm. before the election and the bandwagon effect mm -hmm. because we have surveys being conducted through cell phones and landline and there's a difference between that and also the anti-graph law, it may have impacted how uh, the, the candidates campaign. How would you rate some of the uh, X factors in the election here? You raised too many issues. Well, from my understanding, as uh, the current ruling party's vic victory may give them uh, wrong messages, because uh, some ethical issues, morality issues, those has been still unclear, and then they have to, uh, not effectively, but you know, righteously defend their position. Uh, a couple of, at least, a couple of the candidates who obviously won the election. They're not really uh, free from any moral judgment by the people. Even if they won, you know, the election with big margin, that does not mean people are really satisfied with everything they did or they will do in the potential. So uh, uh, ruling party might have to think about whether their uh, victory is what they have done right or people still have, even though despite many factors that worry people, people still want to support them to move on to the, you know, progressive uh, and also, you know, country's reunification. So in some sense, they must realize uh, they have to earn the trust of the people even now from here on still. Otherwise, they will have big losses from the next election. That's what people are taking, you know, paying attention to, you know, the next move of the current ruling party. Right, letting them know, hinting them that they will not just sit idly by mm -hmm. while things go on around them. And certainly they'll have to make sure uh, right. they have a sense of awareness. There are some unique elements to Korean election campaigning, moving on to some uh, lighter topics, mm -hmm. uh, songs, dance, uh, campaign trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe uh, South Korea's uh, uh, campaigning or election mood or the atmosphere or the culture compared to other countries? Well, for me, it's, it's quite uh, entertaining. You know, many, many people, you know, it's not about the major TVs and, you know, you know the massive, the, you know, expensive the program you know, the campaign. But my reason, you know, you know, local elections is very funny, you know, young people wearing the same uniform and they, you know, walk and move and, and dance and that really pleased many people and that gives new energy for people and then that's 
another evidence that people need to change this country from the uh, political areas. So it gives a good energy for the older people, and then people are really happy whether they they you know they are supporting people won the election or not. Right, it gets the people involved, engaged, and it adds a personal touch to it, and a mm -hmm. uniquely Korean flavor, you might add. But of course, there were some restrictions here due to uh, some of the uh, scandal that was going on, as we previously mentioned. And even for the campaigners, they had to be careful of the major changes with the anti-graph law in place. Uh, that I don't think much about it. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, let me change the topic. Uh, my, my son is only uh, seven years old, his elementary school. Uh, boy, and uh, he asked me this morning, who, you, who did you vote? And then, yes, I did, and uh, who did you vote for? And, you know, thinking about this kid's uh, mindset, I think sometimes the uh, Korean people are too much political. And then that's, you know, people try to uh, change things in their living styles and life uh, patterns uh, solely through the, the uh, political elections. Uh, I think that's might we might have to change the thing because you know uh, whichever person got a parties won the election or vote that does not really directly affect your mindset of your life and your you know relationship with your, your family and then your community. Right, there are certain rigid formats that we, we might have to move out of mm -hmm. to make some changes for the future generations. So, I want to focus on uh, uh, the Liberty Korea Party's Hong Jun Pyo, the mm -hmm. chair. He's been quite a controversial figure with his uh, comments mm -hmm. and uh, certain moves that he made, and he seems to be a bit aggressive, according to some, internally or externally. Mm -hmm. What can we make of him? Well, uh, sorry for him, but I stopped paying attention to him. Because you know he just talk and uh, it's like he says he says and people don't care much about it. The thing, the next move that he has to really think about is uh, how he can combine and uh, integrate the, or scatter the conservative parties and uh, people. And uh, there are you know you know the good peoples and bad people in all around the world and different you know political the spectrum, but uh, you know. There are good and uh, you know the, those sincere people who really think about you know the future of this country and uh, for the next generation, and then because of Hong Junpyo and the old ancient regime, people are still holding you know the powers of the, you know those uh, limited power, but that the prohibit the young peoples you know moving into and joining the you know conservative areas, and so I think. He really has to think about his future with the old conservative, you know, party support people. Is there a movement of uh, the conservative blocs trying to distance themselves from mm. uh, Chairman Hong? Well, that's their decision. But uh, for, this is my personal opinion. But uh, maybe they have to divide and uh, integrating, you know, uh, things uh, on and on. So maybe who knows in the future, but. Uh, the the Liberty Korean Party might have to, uh, to shut down, and uh, the new newer people will come. The problem is that we haven't seen a new faces for this conservative party. In it's been you know this is really good opportunity because you know the uh, changing you know old subject uh, that we had the fulfilled problem from the the last Lee uh, Lee Myung Bak and the uh, Park Geun administration we say we feel sorry about it and uh, this is how we go with this new face and new people this is really good momentum and opportunity and they didn't really listen to you know what people really are sincerely asking for so you know this uh, opposite party might have to think about you know they are not the you know the possessing power any longer they have to be more challenges and more reformative. That's right. how we... They do not seem to have a clear mm -hmm. sense of awareness of where they stand, mm -hmm. that they're down, they need to find a way mm -hmm. up. Uh, and you have uh, two ears and one mouth, so you should listen more. That's what some salesmen would say. Uh, th in Korea, there's a tendency for a lot of uh, political parties to suddenly change their name. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a reason, is there a rationale behind this? It seems like a recurring pattern. Well, that causes many problems for me because I cannot remember and you know memorize all new ch you know, changes name. Well, 
basic idea is a two party plus you know small uh, uh, progressive and liberal and more conservative party might be always happening even if they change his name. Uh, comparing to my uh, college years, uh, 30 some years ago, those, you know, the congressmen and uh, or the poor elite people are still remain the same. They only change the name and, you know, their houses and colors. You know, we, we, we see, you know, each election time, we see new uh, colors of uh, windbreakers. That really uh, make things funky. So uh, from now on, I really hope that conservative and uh, uh, liberal and uh, uh, progressive party might have to stick with you know what they are. Right. Uh, going back to you, Minji, I have one question. Uh, there is a need for a change, uh, reinvent themselves. We have a tendency to dwell and sort of be stagnated, especially when it comes to political realms. Uh, what would you what would you see going up for the Liberty Korea Party as well as the Democratic Party? They cannot be complacent anymore. Well, if it's a landslide for the ruling party, it also means a devastating loss for the main opposition. The ruling party initially aimed to win at least nine districts in the mayor, the race for mayor and governor, while the main opposition wanted to win at least six. But that hasn't been the case, obviously. So this might lead to some serious political reshuffling, and that could come in the form of a change in party leadership or forming a coalition of some sort or even lead to defections to other parties. So some parties will not look as if they are now, as we see them now. Such a result would be good for the ruling party now that it would be easier to get President Moon Jae-in's policy agendas rolling across all four co corners of the country should his party take up most of the regions. But like experts have said, it's important to keep a balance between the two parties. Um, like the professor said, it doesn't necessarily mean that the ruling party has been doing a good job. So we will have to see how that turns out. And it's likewise for parliament as well. The ruling party is on track to adding 10 more parliamentary seats and giving um, the 128 seats in parliament, as long, uh, along with other liberal parties in, in the parliament, would give it a more bigger say. And the main opposition and centrist parties may have difficulty keeping the government in check or preventing any um, bills that they don't like to get passed. Right, we've been hearing about reforms and reviving the economy for so many years, but not much substance so far. It, perhaps it's, it's because they've been not been given the chance to uh, try and fail and try again, whether they're from the conservative or the liberal bloc. Right, going back to you, Professor Wong for one last question before we wrap things up. Uh, what about the lesser known parties and the lesser known independent candidates? Are they being given enough opportunities? Is there a, is there, is there a flaw in the system where uh, not everyone gets an equal say or equal time in the spotlight? Small parties and uh, independent uh, candidates, uh, they might have to be, you know, really uh, complain about this uh, current uh, setting and situation and results coming. Because you know they never have chance to speak out and speak up. Because uh, many issues are covered by you know North Korea and uh, the U.S. summit, and uh, uh, small issues but important issues. This is local election. And the locality and many issues has not been listened, uh, you know, spoke by the you know small party and the liberal party. So we have to think about you know why this is happening. Is that because of the election system or just happened for now because it, this is how society is uh, moving. But still sorry for you know small party people. Right. Many people talk the talk about understanding their local districts and the uh, local culture but few people can walk the walk. So perhaps uh, the other smaller candidates will be given the uh, greater opportunities in the near future. Professor, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Thanks for having me. And Minji, of course, uh, we will continue to have our discussions and continue to dissect the development later on. Thank you.